stories from the comedies, we moved on to some characters. So I finished <laughs> Alhamdulillah, eventually, eventually it's a one, uh, one word joke, <laughs> uh, which we hear in 40 Towers from Manuel, Manuel the waiter from Barcelona, abused by 40 Towers, aka John Cleese. So eventually we finished the final graduate story. In fact, it's without an end because I, I don't know what happened. Right? An end would be would be looking in archives or somewhere and see that yes, indeed there was a complaint, there was a, uh, a, a statement somewhere, and then they said, okay, this is a dubious fellow. We have to put him on the side. <coughs> Look at it and maybe shoot him. <laughs> I just, but first take him out of Ponagash. And that helped this connection here with Claire because that helped uh, convince me okay, I don't want to go through this again because I was devastated. I thought, yeah, well, they may even shoot me. They call in the middle of the night and say, we can't tell you anything, but just back up and come back to the capital. And that's it. And I was thinking, <clears throat> this is serious. Otherwise, they would say, you missed a figure in the documents, you dropped a, an Englishman from the road, and this being the mountains, you just rolled down the side of the mountain, then ended up in the city and died, or something like that. Or issued a complaint. <laughs> I want to register a complaint. Um, that's again John Cleese in this time in uh, the parrot sketch when he brings up the dead Norwegian blue is in the, in the sketch but it's in fact a, a blue and gold coat like that one over there <coughs> <coughs> so there was this complaint and I mentioned Stefan the fellow with a car that's 1990 for you maybe in 2000 and 26 will reach that point. Great, we're going with these notes. Uh, <coughs> I mean, if Putin allows it to be um, feasible uh, to have a future, to keep stocking nuclear weapons. So, <coughs> pardon. Um, Claire, we met Claire at, at the airport. Uh, Stefan and I had each one bus. Uh, Claire was with the friend <laughs> Margaret. I, I gave her a name, uh, Susie. I think I said Susie. Okay, I said Susie. Uh, and I'm laughing a little bit on my own because oh, well, let's anticipate that's the way these work. <clears throat> At one point in the second week of the holiday, they were supposed to stay on the coast in my mind, Black Sea coast. <clears throat> But I took them to the city, to the capital, uh, for one day or two. Um, and by that time, I was in business. <laughs> These tools would help make money on the side, and I'll eventually explain how. That's probably in, in some of the next episodes. Uh, I'm thinking then you're one of the top 20, 10, maybe 50. I mean, I don't know where his place now, richest uh, man of the land now. Uh, back then, uh, an apprentice to yours truly. <coughs> and we'll talk how money were made then. So. <coughs> and. Um, I had this Dutch young car, uh, second hand. And Susie. Uh, as far as I know, she was an ambulance driver in England, in the UK, and uh, Sheffield. They were both from Sheffield, two friends. And she would drive Dacia uh, in, in Bucharest, and uh, that would be some fun. Terror also, that's dark humor, macabre humor for you. Um, she would drive, but I remember at one point, uh, streets were empty, but in the last years of the communist regime, 
there were more, more uh, restrictions, limitations, impositions, uh, uh, <clears throat> power cutouts, and everything else. And on the road, uh, there were periods when nobody could drive except for Ceausescu and his acolytes. Then they would have to, to, to save on anything, on fuel, on food, or they, he had this crazy idea of paying all the debt, <clears throat> no matter what, and get dollars, half currency, again, with any, at any cost. And um, <clears throat> so, um, that's the motorcade. And the, the, okay, people have to go on the side anywhere when the, the official people, because uh, for security reasons, they, they, they worry that lunatics, uh, Oswald, okay, assassination of Kennedy, others trying to kill <clears throat> presidents, dignitaries, celebrities, John Lennon, others. Uh, <clears throat> and um, so that would be one thing. But the, here it was taken to the extreme that we'll kill you first and then ask questions later. I mean, you don't look like you, you're any danger, but still, why not have some fun? So they would just come with their car and ram you over. I mean, it did not... <laughs> Poor Susie, if that was her name. <laughs> she did not do what to do with the car. And I say she was ready because I would have my license only in 1990. True, I would start driving uh, way before that, especially Stefan Scarlo and he's in Switzerland. Uh, he's living a sort of a small... Um, a guarantee uh, <laughs> um, uh, so $2,500 and his $200 Dacia was with me and I was driving him because they were crazy that it's miners coming down and to, to club people and to, to <clears throat> well, kill democracy, kill liberty and all human rights uh, called by the new, more open Ceausescu, aka Iliescu. Uh, but uh, in the Ceausescu days, no question without a license. So <clears throat> Suji was driving. But getting again back uh, to the original place and time, the airport, national airport, Bucharest Airport. And then we go to Levada which is a place on a lake, um, <clears throat> an old construction from, I think it's the uh, 19th century or so, we'll, we'll rebuild, uh, consolidated, but still, uh, I, I thought it very nice back then, and I said, so, so nice that I'm jumping ahead again. In 1990, in the, in the fall, back in, when I meet Miss Romania, and this is where I, I thought when she's coming back, she's coming back from her from Moldova, from her home. And I thought this is where I'll take her to for the nice ambience, for the setting, for the appropriate background to declare my love for her. And um, so that's in the future of the story. And um, <coughs> Would play um, um, things got very uh, intense quickly, and then I was thinking, well, in connection with Juana Brasho, okay, so I'll marry Clara. I mean, if she, she's worthy, of course. And then um, I'll, that's I'll escape. That's my ticket to the West to freedom. And. <clears throat> Uh, there's a problem here, and an admission of serious grave guilt, because initially, if I had been uh, in a position to, to continue in the communist regime with Ceausescu still in power, uh, I would be very uh, grateful to her, and maybe, I don't know, we would have made a, a good couple, a decent uh, relationship. Who's to know? But as it happened, uh, 
this was not to be because once we were freed, <laughs> anticipating. Uh, I, I didn't. I, I thought there's so much happening here. I, 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 I'm getting to, again to the point of the revolution. My little contribution, participation in it, little in in the grand scheme of things. Uh, but <clears throat> if we consider those tens of thousands of revolutionaries, let me say it again. My contribution was decisive. I was one of the five, six. I'm just joking. It's not five, seven that took part, but <clears throat> a few hundred at most, uh, really, on the streets there, which I was just going to tell about. Um, so that's that's massive. That's that's something I'm proud of. Uh, really. So there it is. But with that going. Uh, uh, with Claire, I was thinking, I'm, I'm staying here, there's so much happening, there's so many options. I started working with the mass media, but we're getting to that. Um, we're getting to that.